The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely you recognize these timeless words. We heard one translation this morning, and I want to take time to remind you of these words as you might know them, um, and you may have heard them from the King James Version. As I read the text again, I invite you to remember when you have leaned on this psalm in your own spiritual life, maybe in your personal devotion or in worship. Perhaps you were at a funeral, visiting someone in the hospital, or maybe you were the one in the hospital leaning on this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What memories or feelings do you associate with this universal psalm? Has this text comforted you when you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death in your own life? I imagine each of us has a particular story about this psalm. In my work with SACRED, the Spiritual Alliance of Communities for Reproductive Dignity, we talk about weaving together our faith lives and our reproductive lives. When I was with you on New Year's Eve this year, many of you asked me about my work on faith and reproductive justice. Reproductive justice is a framework that was developed 30 years ago by 12 black women in Chicago and it has four tenets rooted in social justice, reproductive rights, and human rights, all seen through the lens of black feminism. And the four tenets are the human right to maintain personal bodily autonomy, the human right to have a child, the human right not to have a child, and the human right to raise the children we have in safe, and sustainable communities. Today, I want to show you how we can read scripture through the lens of reproductive justice. And we will practice using this beloved and familiar psalm. How many of you would consider yourselves to have a faith life? You're sitting in a pew of a church on a Sunday morning, so I imagine some of you have some sort of relationship to a faith life. Have you told your faith story before? Maybe in a small group, in a Bible study, in a Sunday school class, as a part of confirmation. Or maybe you got up in front of the congregation and told a piece of your story. Now, what about your reproductive life? Do you have a reproductive story? Have you ever thought about asking yourself that question? Maybe, maybe not. Have you ever shared your reproductive story in a faith space like this? Maybe not. But each of us has a reproductive story, a reproductive life. Whether we have children or not, it is a part of who we are. It begins with our own birth and story because we were born at a particular time in a particular place to a particular group of people. And then continues with how we learn about ourselves, 
who we are attracted to, what brings us pleasure, and how we decide to meet our bodily and sexual needs. Our reproductive lives are tied up in the ways that we create families, with partners, without, with surrogates, with IVF, with children, maybe without children. Perhaps your family is blood, or your family is made up of people you have chosen to be in a relationship. There are so many decisions that we make throughout our reproductive lives that are good decisions, that are the best decisions for us and for our families. And I'm here to tell you that God is with us for each and every one of those decisions. God, as the accompanier that we hear in Psalm 23, is with us and does not shame, judge, or stigmatize us. If we are creating communities of faith where all are truly welcome, where every part of every person is loved and cherished, then we have to create and hold space for people to share their reproductive story free from shame, judgment, and stigma. As Christians, I hope we all know and trust and feel deep in our bones that God is with us across our lifetimes. Through our highest of highs and our lowest of lows, God is with us every step of the way. If you remember nothing else from today's service, I hope it is that God is with you. Yes, you. Yes, now. Yesterday. Tomorrow. And all of the yesterdays that have already passed and the tomorrows that are yet to come. But let's begin to practice weaving together our faith stories and our reproductive stories as we reflect on Psalm 23. I'm particularly interested in thinking about how God is with us in our reproductive lives. And as we're making all these decisions from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, even in times of reproductive loss. The psalm reminds us that our God is a shepherd who accompanies, guides, and blesses us, even in the face of fear. We worship a God of comfort and security, not one of shame, judgment, and stigma. As the womanists teach us, our God makes a way even when there seems to be no way. And God works through everyday folks that we encounter along our journey. Take a moment. Who are some of those people that have accompanied you on your reproductive journey, in your reproductive life? If God is our shepherd who accompanies us through our faith life and our reproductive life, let's see how this psalm shows that, says that God shows up for us. Our shepherd lies down, makes us lie down, makes us rest, invites us to take a break from the daily grind of life in the United States. Each of us is deserving of rest. Each of us is deserving of rest. But it can be really hard to consistently create spa space for rest in a world, and especially in this city, in this corner of this city, that tells us that our worth is tied to our productive value to society. But God is a shepherd who makes us lie down and rest. God is with us in our reproductive lives, and invites us into that rest in a variety of ways. Any of you who have been pregnant know that it's an intense bodily experience and that people need a lot of extra rest leading up to the birth. And sometimes this is even mandatory bed rest to protect the health and well-being of pregnant people. It's a lot of labor before the actual labor begins, you know? And God brings back life through that rest. God restores our soul. 
when we have almost stopped breathing. God brings us back to life and leads us towards pathways of justice. I can't read this verse today without thinking about and remembering George Floyd and his mama. George Floyd died. He's not coming back to life. And yet in his final breaths, he called out to his mama. As he was leaving this earth, as he was being murdered by an agent of the state, he cried out to be reunited with the one who brought him into this earth. And God was with him. Another way to read this is from the perspective of someone terminating a pregnancy. People who decide to terminate a pregnancy do so for a multitude of reasons, one of which is choosing their own life, their own physical health, mental health, vocational future. And by choosing that life, their own life, they restore themselves to their soul and their own pathway of justice in life. And God is with everyone who makes that decision, restoring them to the path that they have decided for in their life. And then we come to the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death. What have been your valleys of the shadow of death in your reproductive life or more generally? I imagine a variety of valleys can show up in reproductive lives. Infertility, miscarriage, fetal anomaly, legal obstacles, medical or physical obstacles, taking that pregnancy test and still not seeing that extra line that you're desperate to see. Danger to a loved one's life, reproductive loss, loss of a child at any age, maternal mortality and the dangers that come with pregnancy and childbirth, navigating the most complex and bureaucratic healthcare system and insurance and figuring out how in the world you're supposed to get a baby who was born six hours ago onto the insurance and make sure they're actually covered adoption, foster care struggles, children who have, are battling through addiction and depression and anxiety and mental illness and all of that. These are big, complex, and real turns in our reproductive stories that we might not share outside of a close inner circle. But know that God is with you God sees you wherever you are. God loves you through the scary, scary stuff. Our accompanying shepherd comforts and consoles you and me and all of us through our valleys. But what comes after the valley of the shadow of death? God prepares a table for you, for me, for us. God anoints our head with oil. Robert Alter is a Jewish literary scholar who has published a translation and commentary on the Hebrew Bible. And in his commentary, he notes that this is not a sacramental religious anointing, but it is a sensual, luxuriant oil. God invites us to rest. God takes care of our bodies with delicious food and drink. God loves us and wants us to love our bodies with things that feel good, like a massage or a bubble bath or maybe doing our physical therapy exercises after a procedure, even if they don't actually feel good in the moment. But that is what is good and it helps us to love our bodies and that is what God wants. God lovingly cares for us and wants abundant life. This God has no time for shame, judgment, or stigma about who is parenting in what way or whether to breastfeed or use formula. God has no time for all of that angst. And this psalm ends 
with covenant blessings, not with curses. As God's sheep, we all experience joy and suffering, hope and lament, and plenty of things in between and all at the same time. It can be sort of confusing, and yet the psalm tells us God pours blessings on us, and we will dwell in the house of God for our entire lives. You can get through the hard times. You can do the hard things because you are not alone. God's place, God's house, is a place of security and harmony with the divine. And the psalm does not say that there will not be hard things because there will be, there are, you know this, but that God, our accompanying shepherd, is with us every step of the way. And sometimes we feel that presence really close and we're really sure, and other times God shows up through the people and the community around us, through doctors and nurses, through social workers, through church communities, through chosen family, through our co-workers and our schools. God is everywhere, all around us, accompanying us through our reproductive lives. Perhaps we can encounter the divine as we share more of our reproductive stories with each other that we already got a glimpse of in our prayers. As we all go out this week, I hope that you will open your heart to search your own reproductive life. See where God has accompanied you through the valley of the shadow of death or already prepared a banquet table for you. I invite you to listen for the ways that goodness and kindness follow you out of the service and into the world where God is every step of the way. Amen. Amen.